subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, it's Joy Learning Channel with Wisdom Agbesinyale. As usual, we see one. Always enjoying chemistry on Joy Learning Channel. Welcome. What do we have today? Oh, element. Hey, yes, element, atoms. They are arranged. How are they arranged? So, the arrangement, what does it tell us? Is there any importance to the arrangement? Yes, because from there, we can do a lot of manipulations of the chemical species for the betterment of society. So today, we want to look at the periodic law. And then that will lead us to periodic properties. And we'll talk about examples of periodic properties. And pick them one by one and highlight on them. Here, there are no technicalities here. It's literature, reading, reading, reading. So you must really take your time. Read them closely for you to grasp the concept. And you will enjoy on Joy Learning Channel. Right, so what is the periodic law? Recurring pattern. You can get the periodic table by you because it's a period. So periodic table. So the law governing it. You know, the elements are arranged vertically and horizontally. So from top to down, we say that is a group of elements. From left to right, we say that is a period of elements. You see. And the elements, we have their physical properties and they can combine. They can undergo chemical changes when you put them together. Then we say that is a chemical reaction. You see? Right. So, per definition of the periodic law, it is the physical and chemical properties of elements changing regularly according to their atomic numbers. So, it is the atomic number that gives us a specific element on the periodic table. So, for example, if I say state the element with atomic number 11, you will not go and mention any other element than sodium. So you tell me it is any. What is the atomic number of magnesium? You will not tell me anything than telling me magnesium has atomic number 12. You see. What about chlorine? 17. But physically chlorine is gas at room temperature. Physically sodium is a metal at room temperature. Very soft metal. You see. So the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic numbers. So if you don't like the first one for the periodic law, then you can have the second one as the definition. So choose the one that you like. So when elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, there is a periodic repetition of their chemical and physical properties. So for example, if I move from left to right, that is, I have lithium, then I have sodium, then I have potassium. All these guys, they have one electron in their valence shell. So we say they are in group one. So 
So if I move from there, there, and then back to sodium, lithium and sodium will share a common pattern in chemical property and in physical property. Lithium is solid at room temperature, sodium is solid at room temperature, and they can lose one electron. So that is the recurring property we are talking about. So both elements in the same group behave similarly. So it means that if I move from potassium to the last group there, group 8, and I return Whatever is here, say X, will behave like potassium. So recurring property. So that follows and is exhibited on the periodic table. So we follow up with the trends on the periodic table. That is the periodic property. And of course, physical or chemical property of element that changes regularly or shows variation with increasing atomic number you see so it is the atomic number and of course the valence the valence electron or the electron in the last shell of a given atom that will determine the behavior of that particular element or atom So in each period or group, it is the pattern of the property that is repeated, as I have already said. So when we are looking at the periodic properties one after the other, we need to keep the following terms. Shielding or screening effect. It is the reduced attraction by the protons for the outermost or valence electron or electrons caused by the core electrons. So if I have an atom like that, then I have the nucleus and I have the electron on the shell. The nucleus is positive in nature and then the electron is negative in nature so unlike poles will attract it means that there is attraction between the nucleus and the electrons on the shell if I have two shells the nucleus is there with eight positive effects I have electron there and I have that. This inner one becomes the core electron or the core shell. Since they are also negative, they will receive some of the positive attraction from the nucleus. So it means that this last electron here is going to receive less attraction than expected. And it is that effect we are describing as the shielding or screening effect. In other words, the core electron or the core shell containing electrons is shielding the positive effect from being received by the outer electron. So it means that as the core electrons or the inner shells increase, the outer electron will experience less and less and less attraction. So the shielding effect becomes higher and higher and higher as the inner shells are increasing. So the net charge that is received or finally received by the outer electron 
is the effective nuclear charge. So the net positive charge that the outermost electron or electrons experience through attraction and of course by the protons or neutrons of an atom. So after these core electrons receive the attractive force, what is left will be received by the outer electron. And that is the effective nuclear charge. So it means that the effective nuclear charge is inversely proportional to the shielding effect. When the shielding effect increases, the effective nuclear charge decreases and vice versa. We can now continue with the properties. So we look at the periodic properties. Here, the periodic properties we should be able to define and explain how they vary on the periodic table from top to down that is down a group or from left to right that is across the period we should be able to explain that there is no mathematics here it's straightforward you know or you don't know you can't manipulate anything So the examples we'll be looking at are atomic radius or ionic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, electronegativity, melting point, boiling point, hydration energy, atomization energy, and many more. But for our purpose, we will look at one atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. The electronegativity, there is small mathematics, it just subtract one from the other. That's all. It's not anything that you should be afraid of. Is that okay? Yes. So we want to talk about them one after the other atomic radius or ionic radius we know that it is an atom that forms an ion you see uh -huh. so for definition it is the half the distance between the nuclear of any two closest atoms in a substance half the distance so if I have this and I have that. You see, so this is the distance between two closest atoms. We are saying half of that, so half here. So this one here becomes the atomic radius, that one there becomes the atomic radius. The next thing is how does atomic radius vary across the period and down the group these are the things we should know after the definition we talk about the variation across the period from left to right and then down the group from top to down so across the period what is happening If you are moving from left to right, the atomic number will increase. If the atomic number is increasing, it means that the number of electrons will also increase. But the number of shells will remain the same. So for example, if I have lithium here, one, two, three. So lithium has atomic number three. And then 
atomic number four. That is beryllium. Then we can talk about atomic number five. You realize that after the first shell receiving two electrons, any other shell that comes is constant by receiving more electrons as you move from left to right. So the second shell of lithium has one electron. The second shell of beryllium has two electrons. What about the second shell of boron? We'll have three electrons. So as you are moving from left to right, then number of electrons are increasing on the outer shell. That is also telling us that the number of protons is increasing. So if the number of protons is increasing, it means that there will be higher effective nuclear charge or effective nuclear charge will increase from left to right. Because we have only one core shell shielding the outer electrons. So shielding effect is the same. That will give rise to increasing effective nuclear charge across the period. So when that happens, there is stronger attraction for the outer shell, thereby squeezing the atom to become smaller. Just you 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 go <laughs> you go for dining back at school, then they'll give you a slide of a, of bread, then you squeeze it because you apply force. You squeeze it in your palm. They say, ah, look at this small bread. <laughs> so that is how the atom also behaves when it is experiencing higher effective nuclear charge. It will squeeze. So the atom becomes smaller and smaller and smaller as you move from left to right. But this statement only holds for from group 1 to group 7. So the atomic size decreasing across the period is for from group 1 to group 7. Then the group 8 elements, because they have fully filled orbital, the electrons there experience some form of repulsion. So, when I want to come near you, so don't come near me. So, there is repulsion. Because of that effect, it caused the group 8 element to expand. So, they have larger size than the group 7 element. You get it? Yes. So, the general statement that atomic radius decreases across the period is from group 1 to group 7. Take note of it. Right. So, across the period, atomic radius decreases in the same period as atomic number increases. This is due to increase in effective nuclear charge, increases attraction for the outermost electron. However, as I have said, there is an unexpected sudden, sudden increase between the halogens and the noble gases in the same period. So the explanation, as I have said, is here. There is an increase in, uh, increase in repulsion among the electrons in the complete outer shell of the noble gases. You see, so this increased repulsion has the effect of expanding the atom to give it 
a bigger atomic size. So if in examination, question ask you, explain why the group eight elements have larger atomic size than expected or than group seven elements, you should be able to answer this. Is that okay? Don't forget, we are talking about complete show of the noble gases. You know, the noble gases, they have fully filled outer shell. The fully filled outer shell is bringing some form of repulsion. Uh, don't come near me. So you have to move away. You too, don't come near me. So you have to move away. So doing the whole size of the atom expands. So we can talk about a diagram here where atomic radius in picometers is plotted against atomic number. So from lithium to beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. You see, fluorine atomic number nine. So this is period two. So you realize that with atomic number 10, that is neon, who projects a letter like that. See, having atomic size, letter. So that will be the position of neon with atomic number 10. What happens down the group? So down the group, what is happening? So down the group, let me have lithium. So one, two, three. And then let me have sodium. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So ten. Last one. Eleven. So sodium has atomic number 11. So look at it. Lithium has only one shell shielding the outer electron. Sodium has two shells shielding the outer electron. So in which of the cases would there be higher screening effect? Sodium will experience higher screening effect than lithium. And we said that screening effect is inversely proportional to effective nuclear charge. So if that is the case, as shielding effect increases, effective nuclear charge will decrease. So the effective nuclear charge in the case of sodium is less than in the case of lithium. So if you are not able to hold the outer shell strongly, then that effect of expansion will occur. Because it can easily leave your attraction effect. So as the element move from top to down, more shells are being added thereby causing effective nuclear charge to decrease, uh, sorry, increase. More shells are being added. That is causing 
effective nuclear charge to decrease or screening effect to increase. As more shells are added, screening effect will increase, effective nuclear charge will decrease. So if the effective nuclear charge decreases, it means that the attraction for the outer electron will be less. So that will cause the atom to expand. So down the group, atomic size increases. So they are here for your reference. Atomic size increases, increasing screening effect or decreasing effective nuclear charge or attraction. Decreased attraction for the outer electrons. Those are the reasons why as you move from top to down, you experience increasing atomic size. So we can pick an example on this diagram where we are looking at group one element, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Now, of course, atomic radius in picometers. So these are the atomic values for the atomic radius. Then we can also talk about group 7. We have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Say if you extrapolate, Einstein time will go up there. Now, what happens if an atom is losing an electron or an atom is gaining an electron? What happens to the size when you compare it to the neutral atom where the number of protons equal to the number of electrons? So let's say for example, I have sodium. Sodium has atomic number 11. The neutral sodium, 11 protons attract 11 electrons. But when sodium loses one electron, we will have 11 protons attracting 10 electrons. You see, so in the neutral atom, I'll have three shells. So sodium is in pure three. We have two core shells shielding the outer electron. But when sodium loses one electron, we have only two shells. You see, only one shell containing electrons show the outer electrons in the case of Na+. Plus. So in which of the cases will we experience greater effective nuclear charge? It will be the Na plus ions will experience greater effective nuclear charge. So that tells us that since 11 protons are attracting 11 electrons in the neutral atom, and then 11 protons are attracting 11, 10 electrons in the ions. The ion will have smaller size than the neutral counterpart because of high effective nuclear charge.
you see. <laughs> but what about so it is here for your reference. So fluorine has nine electrons. So two plus seven. Now of course it has two shells. So it is in period two. Now fluorine gains an electron. So here, nine protons attract nine electrons in the neutral fluorine. But here, we have nine protons attracting ten electrons in the ion of fluorine. What is happening? You see. However, the incoming electron will experience some form of repulsion. So it means that that form of repulsion will cause the ionic size of the fluorine minus to expand, increase. Because of that repulsion. Less proton is attracting more electrons. So the effective nuclear charge to will be reduced or will be less. In that case, the anion of any given element will have larger size than the neutral counterpart. So here we use chlorine to illustrate. So size of CO minus is greater than that of CO. So in our examination, the examination can ask you to explain why CO minus has larger size than CO. So you should be able to explain. So 17 protons attract 17 electrons in CO, while 17 protons attract 18 electrons in CL minus. So if you make that statement, for example, you have two there. So one there and then two there. So you are comparing two things. So let's say a statement for one, one, the statement for the other, another. Or sometimes it is fused. When you make that complete statement, you have one. So effective nuclear charge in CO is greater than in CO minus. Because CL minus has extra electron to be attracted by protons, you see. It also brings about repulsion between the existing and incoming electrons. So as a result, the size of CL minus increases. So the anions are greater than their corresponding neutral atoms, you see. So... That's how it is. Let's look at another illustration where we are comparing lithium and beryllium ion. So here, what we say, lithium has three electrons, beryllium three electrons after losing one electron. So since the two species have the same electrons, we describe them as isoelectric. Iso means same, and then electron means, as you know, has to do or refers to electrons. So, same electrons or same number of 
electrons so both species are iso electronic so if that is the case what do you think in the be plus we have four protons attracting three electrons and then in the li we have three protons attracting three electrons so which case will receive higher effective nuclear charge you see it is the be plus so if that is the case the BE plus will have smaller size than the LI. You see, because of the high effective nuclear charge, as the bread example, press it, it becomes small. The next property we want to talk about is ionization energy. Whenever we talk about ionization, then we talk about cation formation. You see, here a single atom gives off an electron to become a cation or positively charged. How? If I have Li, Li lithium solid, as we see at room temperature, is made up of like atoms or the same atoms. Therefore, the solid lithium that is at room temperature cannot lose an electron. So when will it lose an electron? what should happen to it before it will lose an electron you need energy when you add energy the solid lithium will undergo sublimation you see where the metallic bond is broken so when the metallic bond is broken in the element lithium the atoms are free to move so if the atoms are free to move they have high energy so this is my lithium metal it's now in the gaseous state the atoms making up are now in the higher energy form so they have high energy and all of course they are moving so high kinetic energy so if they have high kinetic energy it means that they will move away from one another so if they move away from one another as far as possible the force of attraction between the atoms becomes much much less even almost non-existent because they have high kinetic energy when that happens we refer to them as isolated gaseous atom or free gaseous atom they are free everybody is going its own way there is no force of attraction they are out of the attractive environment of one another you see so what is happening you need energy to remove an electron from the isolated gaseous atom so it is the atom that loses electron to become ionized and of course to form the cation that is why in the definition we said that it is the minimum energy needed or required to remove completely the outer motion of a gaseous isolated 
species or atom or you can say minimal amount of energy needed to remove an electron from a gaseous isolated atom or species please take note gaseous because they have high kinetic energy so they have become isolated they are out of the attractive force of one another now when that happens the lithium can move from there to there losing an electron so this one we can say this is the first ionization energy because the neutral atom has lost one electron so that is ionization energy one so we can talk about ionization energy two or second ionization energy the second ionization energy it is the isolated cation that loses another electron so we can talk about the second ionization energy and so on and so forth if we have species that will form more than one cation then we can have first ionization energy second ionization energy third ionization energy and then we can also have wheezy ionization energy <laughs> you get that yes okay so that we can say first ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one electron from one mole of gaseous atom to form one mole of gaseous singly charged cation so here you can decide to bring it or to leave it out so the second ionization energy is the energy required to remove one electron from a gaseous singly charged cation so another illustration i have sodium here losing an electron to give us the sodium metal or i can write it this electron can go there so i can have na producing na plus plus one electron more please don't memorize this they are constants if you your head is big then you can memorize <laughs> okay we can look at aluminium aluminium has to lose three electrons so we say it is a tri cation forming element it means that it will have a plus three charge so let's see take note the ionization energy is not once it is a process if i say al3 plus it doesn't mean that the aluminium element or atom has lost the three electrons at a go no it goes step by step by step until all the three electrons is lost so it will have three ionization energies you get yes so look at this aluminium metal will go to the isolated state then it will lose one so that one is the first ionization energy then that cation will lose another one that will give us second ionization energy so this is first ionization energy second ionization energy where you lose two and then we can have third ionization energy to finally arrive at the l al3 plus now look at this so the values are quoted and you realize that as aluminium is losing the electrons the ionization energy was also increased any explanation to that yes we're talking about effective nuclear charge so as you are losing an electron 
the effective nuclear charge will also be increasing. You see, so that has been attested to by the values quoted a noble gas because it has electron of 10, 10 electrons. So I would say that Al3 plus is isoelectronic to neon with 10 electrons. Please take note whether an atom loses or gains an electron, it doesn't affect the number of protons. So here, aluminum, I will still have my 13 proton number, but 10 electrons. That is why it is isoelectronic to neon. So now look at it. We want to enter the plus 4 state of aluminum and look at the energy. Look at the energy in the plus three. That is the third ionization energy. We have 2,745 kilojoule per mole. But when we lose from the noble gas state configuration, it has jumped to 11,578 kilojoule per mole. That's huge. You see, that tells you that Electron configuration affect ionization energy. So, because we are taking an electron from a noble gas configuration, the effective nuclear charge is very high because 13 protons are attracting 10 electrons. So, you can just imagine you have very high effective nuclear charge. So if that is the case, the atom has become smaller. So for you to take an electron from that atom, you need a lot of energy to be able to take that electron because of very, very high uh, effective nuclear charge. So the arrangement here, it increases in that order. At the first ionization energy is less than second, is less than third, is less than fourth. Or the fourth ionization energy is greater per the values given here. So here, Azam can ask you, explain why the fourth ionization energy is much, much greater than the third or the second or the first ionization energy. So for explanation, increasing effective nuclear charge as the atom loses electrons. So as the atom is losing electrons, the effective nuclear charge will be increasing and be increasing. So there will be stronger force on the out. So higher energy is needed to take electron from the stable noble gas electron configuration as recorded in ionization energy number four here you see so the total energy needed to remove all four electrons will be that first ionization energy plus second plus third plus four so that gives me 16,718 kilojoule per mole energy is needed to take an electron to remove all the four electrons from the aluminium to produce the Al4+. So if it is Al3+, then you can just add this one. So what happens to ionization energy across the period? We said that size decreases across the period. So if the size is decreasing, it means that there will be high effective nuclear charge that we have already established. Therefore, high effective nuclear charge on the outer electron, you will find it very difficult 
to remove an electron. So ionization energy increases across the period because of decreasing size and then increasing effective nuclear charge. Take note, across the period, shielding effect is the same for every period on the periodic table. So let's take note that first ionization energy increases across a period because electrons in the same principal quantum shell do not completely show the increasing nuclear charge of the protons. So electrons are held more tightly, require more energy to be ionized. So the ionization energy of chlorine is greater than that of sodium and of course sulfur is greater than that of magnesium down the group what do you think will happen ionization energy will decrease because size is increasing attraction for outer electron decreases so the electrons there they have higher energy to escape the attractive force of the nucleus so in that case oh if somebody has high energy and you want to take that person you need less energy to take that person so it's simple it will just move away so ionization energy will decrease that attests to reactivity for example for the group one element sodium is more reactive than lithium magnesium is more reactive than sodium and so on. So you can just imagine the reaction of rubidium and cesium. So ionization energy decreases because there is increasing size. So effective nuclear charge decreases or the atoms will experience higher screening effect. So examples are here. Sodium has higher ionization energy than cesium. Chlorine has higher than iodine. So we can end with the factors that influence ionization energy. So one, atomic size. Two, stability of electron configuration as we have seen in the case of aluminum. When aluminum is losing and it has lost three, so it has stable noble gas electron configuration. So the energy you need there, huge. If the shielding effect is high, you need less energy to ionize. That is to take away electron. And the distance between the nucleus and the outermost electrons. So if the atom size increases, you realize that the distance between the outer electron and the nucleus will also be increasing so less effective nuclear charge so at the end of the day it will affect ionization because if the distance is longer you need less energy to ionize right so it's been good with you on joy learning channel my name has not changed yet. I'm still Wisdom Agvestinial with you one. Until we meet again, don't forget, always enjoy chemistry, enjoy learning channel. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.